In the last video, we touched on me installing this LS3 engine in my Nova and starting it up for the very first time. And before I started it up, I gave a brief tour of what I got going on here in the engine bay. And some of you may have noticed that something was missing. And the missing piece was the radiator support panel. Now back in episode 64, I show that this Nova, or I explained rather, that this Nova came with a heavy duty radiator. And the radiator support panel matched that radiator and what the dealer did or the factory they created a new panel longer or wider and the way they did that was they added an extra piece and they kind of you know welded it on spot welded it or whatever and if you want to check out details on that I'll link up in the um, upper corner right hand side uh, a, a link to that video so you can see what that radiator support panel looked like and what I had to do but that set off a set of videos in me creating a whole new radiator support panel just for this Nova because I couldn't use that original panel. You know, it, it looked ugly, I needed a new one. So just like when I installed that 454, now I have an LS3 engine and now I need to create another radiator support panel, but with a couple changes. The first thing is the radiator support panel's job is to actually hold the radiator up against the core support. It had mounting pads on either side and when you bolted it into the core support, well, it, it held the radiator in place. I never liked that. So one of the changes I had to make was getting this radiator to be attached to the core support. And that's what this is. This is a bracket. And the one good thing I like about the Champion radiator is it has this raised area. And I took advantage of this area to actually drill through it so I can put some, you know, mounting um, screws for the actual radiator fan and the radiator itself. Now, that's the first function. With this here in place, this radiator is not going to go anywhere. But that's not the only reason why I created that, um, that bracket. It serves another function. Now, when I had the 454, I did run a Champion radiator. And so you can see that when I was, um, you know, taking the, or running the 454 for the last time. I showed that I had a Champion radiator. But that radiator was a second unit. The first Champion radiator went through a process called electrolysis. And an explanation is gonna be right there. So we have electricity flowing all through the engine bay and electrical current goes through the coolant and what ends up happening is electrolysis. And what that just means is the radius starts to eat away. And that is exactly what happened with my first Champion radiator. It ate away and it started leaking. Well, I had to replace it. So now that I have the LS3 engine and I'm using an, a, a Champion radiator once again, I want to prevent that. And the only way to prevent that is to actually provide a ground path uh, to the radiator. You have to ground the radiator to the negative side of the battery. And that's the second purpose for this bracket. Now, when I created this um, car, I wanted to make sure that I had a ground path from the battery to the core support. So I actually have a ground strap. And so this multimeter is going to show you that the radiator is grounded. We have it attached to a ground point on the fender and if the two touch together, we have continuity. And it makes a sound. So now if I touch the radiator and it makes a sound, we have it, uh, we have a ground path from the radiator to the negative side of the battery. It's grounded. We'll try the radiator cap. We have ground. We tried the overflow uh, cap. We have ground the overflow bottle, we have ground, even the bracket goes to ground. So basically anything attached to this core support is going to be grounded. And that's why that is there. I wanted to ensure that we had a path back to ground.
Now for the new radiator support panel that I want to create, I wanted to go back to the car's roots. When I was taking this car apart for this LS3 build, I removed the fuel tank and I was blessed with a build sheet, which I framed because, well, I wanted to frame it, save it, because it's an important part of the car's history. And you can see there that it says Copo Options, heavy duty cooling. Now that confirms that my car was originally a, a Copo Nova with a heavy duty radiator and it explains why this car came with a custom panel. Now the problem with having a custom panel from the factory uh, is that you cannot buy that panel today. That panel is not reproduced, you can't get it. The only panel that they have nowadays is a standard panel. So I wanted to bring the car back to its roots and I wanted to use, um, you know, the panel that you normally see on a Nova. So my idea was to create a Copo radiator support panel. So basically I was gonna use two standard radiator support panels, cut them up, put them together and make one Copo radiator support panel. And that's what I'm gonna show in this video. So here's a look at the panel in the sunlight. Hoping that you can pick up on the metallics. I don't know if this camera's picking it up, but it came out sweet. You can't tell where the seam is. And in the next clip, I'll talk about that and a couple of other things that I want to mention in the creation of this panel. get a look at it from here but it came out sweet now for the primer I use this here and this I've used for many years this thing rocks if you're gonna use a can filler primer um, this is where this is what you need to buy this stuff really really works very well it doesn't crack or anything so this is what I use for the panel. Now, when I made this panel, obviously, as I stated earlier, I took two standard panels to make this one Copo radiator support panel. And when I was doing the measurements, basically I, I, you know, I would cut a little bit at a time and lay the panels on top of each other and kind of get a baseline of where I wanted to make the cut. And so I'm gonna show here on the bottom of the panel so you can see where the cut was made. So you can see it there. So that's the seam, and we turn the panel around. You can't see where the seam is on from the top. And so when I built this um, and I made the cuts, I used a chop saw to make the cuts because I wanted the cuts to be perfectly straight. So after doing the chop saw, I made sure to put the two panel pieces together so that I have a seamless, um, you know, joint. And then of course I welded it from the bottom. I did not weld from the top. I set the welder to, to um, make sure that I had great penetration. So when I welded from the bottom, some of the weld actually, you know, kind of went through the top. 
I did that because I didn't want to have to worry about grinding anything down. Um, I didn't want to worry about, you know, heat buildup, maybe warping the panel. I wanted to make sure that I had a seamless top so that when I'm using this to, to fill in the, you know, that seam to make it perfectly, um, you know, seamless, I didn't want to worry about too much body work because I don't want to use any Bondo for this panel. So this panel has zero Bondo. The only thing that this panel has is the filler primer, the base coat, and the clear coat, which you can see here, urethane clear. So that I wanted to cover, first of all. Now, the second thing is that to paint this panel, the, the primer, well, I, I obviously used the can and the way I did it was I first primed only the seam. Let that dry, did maybe two or three coats for the seam only, and then I primed the whole panel, maybe two or three coats, and then did the sanding to blend it all in. So that is how I got the panel to be perfectly straight and, and to become seamless, make it look like this panel is basically one single panel, even though I use two panels to create it. And then as far as the base coat and the clear coat, I use this little sprayer. Not a spray gun or anything like that, just this sprayer, which you can get from Home Depot. And I, and I show this in a video, uh, in an earlier video, where I actually painted the shifter and I'll, I'll link it up in the corner so that, you know, if you wanna reference that. Um, this really works. The only con is to using this is that the can gets really cold and when it does, the pressure goes down and you'll get maybe a little more orange peel. Now, if you saw the videos from when I created the first panel, version one, which was the custom, I made sure to make it perfectly flat. The, the, the finish was so perfectly flat. But because in this build, I wanted to bring the car back to its roots, I didn't want a perfectly flat finish. So I can, you know, I put two coats of clear on here. So I can actually, you know, cut and buff this and make it look flawless. But I didn't want that. That wasn't the, the point of this, uh, this, you know, panel build. I wanted it to look a little bit more factory. So when I used this sprayer, it gave me that factory look. And the orange peel is so minimum, you can see here, it's so minimum, it doesn't take away from the gloss of the panel, but it still retains that factory look. And that was what I was going for. So if you wanna do a small project, you can actually just use a sprayer. And yes, this is urethane base coat, and this is Velocity Red Mica, and then this is the clear coat. And this sprayer doesn't, you know, it, it, you have no problem spraying uh, the clear coat or the base coat through that little sprayer. Now, the other thing I wanted to, to, to cover is this center screw. I don't know if you guys noticed, some guys may have picked it up, but that screw has always been there, even throughout all the paintings. And why is that? Well, that's actually a dummy screw. I'll show you here, you can kind of see. Basically, I took the screw, I cut it, and welded it to the panel, and just kind of, you know, sanded it down smooth. And why did I do that? Why did I choose to have a dummy screw? Well, because right under the screw, there's a hole, and that threaded hole on the, on the core support panel, I used it for that bracket that holds the radiator to the core support. So I can no longer use this screw to bolt this panel to the core support. So I opted for, um, you know, I wanted to make sure that it still looks like it had two screws, I mean three screws on the panel to hold it down, but only two of the screws are actually holding this panel down. And this one's a dummy screw. So throughout every, you know, stage of the, the painting process, I had to mask that screw so that I can avoid getting paint to it. And you can see it came out very sweet. That was a lot of work. That was, I have to say, just masking that little screw was a lot of work. Tedious, very tedious. But I wanted to make sure to, you know, kind of let you guys know on that. And then the final thing is, you know, when I turned this panel over um, the first time, you may have noticed this here. 
and you may be wondering what the heck do you have attached to that panel? Well, I wanted to make sure that, that this panel does not go through heavy heat cycles because it is on top of the radiator um, and the radiator gets hot. So I wanted to protect the panel. So what I did was this is actually some um, heat shielding from um, the, the, the cover for the LS3 engine. So it's like a fiberglass type um, heat shield. And so what I did was I cut a section of it and I used it to shield the panel itself from the heat coming off of the radiator. And that's why this is here. And then we have here aluminum tape because I just wanted to, you know, kind of, um, it was two, it was actually two pieces and I wanted to join the two pieces. So I just, you know, wrapped it with aluminum, aluminum tape. You can see here's the seam line. The Copo radiator support panel installed in the Nova. And it's looking sweet. Try to get, you know, a good angle shot on here so you can see the details of that panel. It looks great. It, it definitely completes the look that I was going for when I had it in my head. I wanted that, you know, classic radiator support panel look with the modern engine. So you got to look there. There's the radiator fan um, attached to the radiator and the panel completely, you know, goes over it with no problems. And I made sure that the panel is long enough to cover the two sides of the radiator with a little bit, you know, a little bit of peaking there so that you can see that it is an aluminum radiator. And we got the bolts. That's a true mounting bolt. That's a dummy bolt. And then we got another true mounting bolt. So when you're looking at the panel, you wouldn't even be able to tell that that bolt is not a real bolt in the center. But I was able to put that mounting hole to good use because I have a bracket attached from the radiator to the core support, which makes the radiator have a path to ground so I prevent electrolysis. So here it is. One last look at the engine bay before we close. It's looking great. And what's this? Why is there a rag on top of my filter. Hmm. Well, if you want to know what's under that rag, you're going to have to subscribe and hit that notification bell because in the next video, I will reveal what I got going on on this side of the engine bay. But until then, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, hit that like button, share this video, and if you want, Hit me up on Instagram. In the description box below, you'll see a link. You can communicate with me, you can say hi, or if you had any questions, feel free to hit me up there and, um, you know, and just follow me. So, one last look, kind of an overview shot. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching.